What's going on guys? Today we're going to be looking at how to install Linux Ubuntu L4T on your Nintendo Switch. Now for this there's a couple things you're going to need, a couple prerequisites. Um, first of all you're going to need an unpatched original Switch. This will not work on newer Switch models that are not patched. This will not work on the Switch Lite. Only an unpatched original Switch. If you're not sure on whether or not you have an unpatched switch. There are uh, web pages that you can go to to check your serial number. It's typically a low serial number. Um, you can go to those sites and it'll tell you whether your switch is possibly patched or not. Now other than the switch, you're going to need a minimum of 32 gigabyte micro SD card. You're going to need a micro SD card reader to USB adapter if you don't have a built-in micro SD card reader. You're going to need a optional USB-A to USB Type-C adapter to connect to your Switch and that will allow you to connect a mouse, USB mouse, or even a USB keyboard to make it easier to navigate. You need a uh, RCM loader. You'll need an RCM jig. Once you have all your components, you need to head over to your PC and insert your SD card. I will meet you at the computer. All right, once you're on your PC, you're going to go to the two websites that are linked in the description. First being GBA Tempt. You're going to go to the L4T Ubuntu main page there. You're going to scroll down. And you're going to click on the standard version link. You're going to download that. Then you're going to go to the Hakate website or at the GitHub page. And you're going to download the latest version. And you're going to download that zip. Once they're both downloaded, you're going to want to extract them. Once they're extracted, you're going to now want to insert your SD card. And you're going to want to go to the SD card formatting tool. Uh, this tool can be used, especially if you have Linux installed on it, you have partitions that aren't being seen on it. You'll want to use this tool because it will format the entire thing, not just the partition that's visible to Windows. Um, if you have just a regular partition, you can skip that and go straight to a FAT32 format. Once your SD card is formatted in FAT32, you're going to want to open up the Explorer to your newly formatted SD card. Open that up and then you're going to want to drag the contents of the Hakate zip that you extracted into the root of your SD card. Once the files are transferred over, you're going to want to eject your SD card and head back over to your switch. All right, now that we're back at the switch, we're going to take our SD card. We're going to reinsert it back into our switch. And then we're going to insert our jig and we're going to insert our RCM loader volume button, power button, and wait for the Hakate logo to appear. Now that we've booted into Hakate, we can go ahead and set the date and press done. Once the data is set, you push OK. Then you're going to go to the Tools menu. Then you're going to go down to RCM. Then you're going to go to Partition SD Card. Click OK. Then you want to go to the Linux Partition slider. And you're going to slide it all the way over until the top HOS is about 7 gigabytes. Once there, you are going to push the Next Step button. You're going to select Start. And wait for that to finish. Once that's done, you're going to press the OK button. Then you're going to go close it out, back to the main screen, hit the home button, and then you're going to power off your switch. Once the switch is powered down, remove your SD card and head back over to your PC. Reinsert your SD card back into your computer. And wait for the Explorer window to pop up. You will see this uh, format, do not format 
Windows is not recognizing that part of the partition that is the Linux partition that we created. So just cancel all that out, exit out, and only focus on the partition that you can see with the files that is the HOS that we left. We left enough room for Linux. So you're going to take the extracted Linux contents and drag that into the root of your SD card. Uh, it will take a little bit. It's about a six gigabyte file. So I'll come back when that's done. Once the files are copied over to your SD card, you're going to eject your SD card and head back over to the switch. Once you're back at the switch, you are again going to reinsert your SD card. Once your SD card is inserted, make sure your jig is inserted, make sure your RCM loader is inserted, volume up, power up, boot in Hakate again. Once that's done, you can pull your jig out, pull your RCM loader out. Then you're going to go to Tools, RCM, Partition SD card, press OK. Then you're going to go to Flash Linux, press it. You're going to click Continue. And then you're going to wait until it flashes Linux. This will also take a little bit, so I'll come back when that's done. Once it's done flashing, you're going to push the delete installation files button and wait for it to delete the installation files once the installation files are installed close out now you're going to want to make sure both of your joy cons are attached and powered on then you're going to go to the NYX options and you're going to press the dump joy con bluetooth button Make sure it says found two out of two Joy-Cons and it dumped the data. Press OK. Now you're going to close this screen and head over to your more configs. Click that and then push the L4T Ubuntu. Now you're loading into switch root Ubuntu. This initial boot will take a minimum of 60 seconds so be patient while it goes through and gets to the uh, installation page. So wait for that and I'll meet you there. So at this point you're going to want to insert your USB type A to type C adapter so you can use your mouse, accept the terms, click continue, pick your language, hit continue. Then you're going to skip Wi-Fi right now, you're not going to connect, connect to Wi-Fi. Hit continue and pick your region. Then add your username, your password, and once that's done, hit continue. And once it finishes, you'll be presented with the installation bar. And once the installation is complete, I am going to skip ahead. Once it is complete, I highly recommend you go to the upper right hand corner and reboot the system.
Once the reboot is complete, you're going to log in with your username and password, wait to get to your desktop, and once you're at your desktop, you're going to need to do a couple of things. The first thing I would do is connect your USB-C adapter so you have a mouse. Once you have your mouse, go to the Wi-Fi symbol, uh, select your Wi-Fi network, enter your password. Once you are connected, you're going to need to download the file that I have left a link to in the description for the Google Drive file. That's your sources list update. So go into Chromium, go to YouTube, go to this uh, video, go down to the description, click the link, and then follow. The link will take you to Google Drive where you can download it. It will download straight into the downloads folder on this computer. Then you're going to go to this top symbol that will open up a search. You're going to type in terminal. And once you do that, it will display the terminal app. You're going to open it. Once it opens, you're going to need to type in a few commands. I will display the command on the screen so you can type it in for yourself and press enter. Once you push enter, it's going to ask for your password. Put your password in. Once your password is put in, it should open up a file browser. So in this file browser, what you're going to want to do is go to the downloads folder. You're going to right click on the sources list and then you're going to copy it. Once it's copied, you're going to click file system. Then you're going to go to the etc folder then the APT folder and then you're gonna right click and paste and you're gonna replace the file when it's that is done you can now close the file browser you're gonna have to close the terminal click X once it's all closed out you're gonna go back to the top click the search go back into terminal again then you're gonna type in the uh, following command that I will put on the screen and press enter It will also ask for a password again, so enter your password and push enter. And then it will begin the process of updating and getting files. This will, may take a little while. Once that is done, you're going to enter in one more command, which I will put at the top of the screen again. You're going to enter it, press enter, enter your password and press enter again. And then it will begin to install all the updates that you just downloaded. This process uh, does take nearly an hour. So um, I'm going to wrap up this video now. But once that is done, you will have a full-fledged Ubuntu install on your Switch. Um, what are the benefits of this? What are some of the things you can do with it? Well, if you watch some of my other videos, I also have Android on another SD card, Android 10, and it gives an enormous bump in performance when it, as opposed to having just the Switch on Atmosphere running RetroArch. You're getting more consoles that you can emulate. You're getting better performance on the ones that do emulate on the Switch on Atmosphere. And overall, just a better experience. But when you get to the harder to run consoles, like GameCube, PS2, that's where Android starts to fall off. The clock rates aren't as high and there's a lot of technical reasons as to why Linux is now better. I won't get into them here, but just know that you will get better performance 
running Dolphin emulator on your Switch with Linux installed. This also opens up opportunities to now install Moonlight so you can stream PC games and even harder to run emulators to your Linux device, your Switch, from your PC. So emulating PS3, emulating Xbox, whatever it is, you can now stream it from your gaming rig to your Switch using Moonlight. You can also run PC games as long as their minimum system requirements do not exceed the Switch's operating specs but you'll have the option of some PC gaming. Uh, if you're into DOS, DOS emulation, you'll be able to put some DOS box on here. Uh, really, the possibilities are endless now that you have a full PC operating system on the Switch. Um, you will have full Joy-Con support. If you go into Bluetooth, you'll see they're already connected. The connection is off, but they're already there. It already knows they're there, and when you need them, it will turn on. Uh, there is a way, I haven't fully tested it out and figured out how to get it to work, but there's a way to possibly use your Joy-Con as a mouse. I personally prefer just to plug in the adapter and have a mouse. You can go ahead and probably put a hub and then have a keyboard and mouse, or, which would be much simpler, is to just use Bluetooth mouse and a Bluetooth keyboard. Either way, you have that ability. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video. Stay tuned for future videos. I'm going to have GameCube running on here seeing how it performs with various games. I'm going to be testing Moonlight, PC games, DOS gaming. Uh, stay tuned for these future videos. If you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, please like, please subscribe. If you have any comments, leave them in the description. And have a good day. Thank you for watching.